Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? We are back with the game mode series. And today, a special one, at least for me, because I am always playing when I do intro matches, I always do Clash of Kings. Uh, because I think it's a really great game mode to start off with. But there are some caveats we want to talk about today. The other one we want to talk about today is um, Dance with Dragons. So we picked the three uh, objective game modes today. And again, I'm uh, uh, joined by Larx and Iceman today again. Great to have you too. Um, so in the general manner, as we do, we have a summary, we have a general approach, and we have in the second one, in Dance with Dragons, we have a visual uh, visualization to, to um, better explain what we, what we mean by it. So um, yeah, anything to add before we start off? Or can we jump right in? Maybe we can say that uh, Clash of Kings is not uh, in the regular tournament uh, guide anymore, mm -hmm. but we think it's a very good and a very fair um, game mode. As you said, you always take it for practice matches with beginners, and I think it's worth playing. I would, I would to encourage tournament organizers just uh, play Clash of Kings. It's a, it's a great mission. Yeah. Good one. All right, so let's jump right in with Clash of Kings. All right, so uh, Daniel, guide us through the summary of Clash of Kings. Yeah, Clash of Kings is um, quite easy to pick up. It's a three objective game mode, so it's uh, yeah very limited in this regard. Um, they are claimed as normal, like you're used to from Game of Thrones, so you have to overlap it completely and um, you control it if you're not engaged with enemies um, that have uh, like more ranks than you. Also like here, solos um, uh, counts as having ranks equal to their wounds. That's that. And obviously it's about the kings in Clash of Kings, um, which translates into your commanders. So um, the special rule for scoring in this game mode is that um, if you kill a unit with your commander, um, then you get an additional VP. If you kill with your commander the enemy commander, you even get two VPs. And one thing to note here is it says attack or ability. So let's say your commander, you know, Chris, um, Benjen, hidden traps. Um, <laughs> if something dies out of like because of hidden traps, this, that would also qualify for scoring um, an additional VP. That is something to to remember here. And um, to even uh, yeah make it more about your commanders, you have the you have five objective cards. It's um, sundering, vicious. It's precision, highest attack die, and uh, weakened when you uh, attack and you can choose two of these cards at the beginning of the game and you can activate them during your game. They will be active for one round and uh, they will grant additional buffs to your commanders. And in general, one could say this game mode is like in the middle between slow or quick game modes. Um, it really depends uh, what you can do and achieve with your commander really. Sorry, I just, sorry, I, I somehow muted. Um, uh, should we talk about the objective cards a little bit more or should we do that in the general approach? Um, we, 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 okay. we can do that in the general approach, I would say, yeah. Yeah, because like one, one, one really big thing that I um, encounter a lot of times, especially when playing with uh, casual gamers is they are not really aware what to pick when playing Clash of Kings. So a little bit like the last time we talked about the missions you, you choose for Winds of Winter. So you probably should have an idea when you play Clash of Kings and you pick your army, you should have a certain, you know, an affinity to a certain, right? So, um, but in general, I would say that Sundering is, you know, straight up the, the best card you can pick, especially when you take, when you can take it away from your from your opponent's commander, right? If if he if, if the opponent's commander does not have sundering, take it away from him as soon as you can, right? So, are there any other um, Martin? Is there any other um, like general um, rules or general guide guidelines on picking objective 
cards for your commander? Yeah, I think it depends hard <clears throat> which commanders are going to clash into each other. So I'm mm. known for loving playing Darkstar, and Darkstar is shooting guys, so he really don't care about these cards. But uh, he can pick the best card for the other commander. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, if you have no card for you, just grab the best card available for the other commander. Um, yeah, it depends. Uh, Gregor Clegan would love to have Thundering if he's in a unit without Thundering. Uh, he brings Thundering now. Ah, he brings Thundering yeah. now. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 he, yeah, yeah. He now yeah. does, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, but Greyjohn, for example, if he's in Cutler, yeah. he would love Thundering. Yeah, or Victorian Greyjohn, maybe. Uh, with Victorian Greyjohn, Victorian Greyjoy, oh my god. Um, yeah, but um, in general, I would say there is no general approach, just pick the best card available. And if you don't care about the cards, just pick the best card uh, for your opponent's commander. Yeah, but like, I, 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 I want to stay there like for just another second, because you say just pick the best card. And that is not an obvious thing for a lot of players. Like the, the, the best card, I, I mean, Sundering is a pretty obvious yeah. thing, right? So, but like, let's say a lot of times when I play, I see people taking Sundering, right? And the other one straight up takes Vicious, right? But are there instances that you would take Weakened? over vicious so i know it really comes down to the units you play right we we totally got that but like when you just want to like when we talk tiering what we did in in other videos is there okay. like a is there like a tiering that you could say it's sundering it's vicious or it's sundering it's weakened it's like what is it i would go sundering high attack dice um weaken vicious precision so it would be really right ranking. but yes. that's but that's because you play Starks a lot. <laughs> no, I think you can generalize okay. it here. Yeah, precision is, uh, it depends on how many sixes you roll. Um, okay. So I think yeah, it's the worst. It, yeah. yeah. Um, which yeah, is that's dependent dice dependent, the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's also dice dependent. Um, True. Sundering obviously is the best, except you're hitting guys with six up armor. And then highest attack dice is nice, and weaken is also nice. But if you destroy the unit, then we can basically gives you nothing. And so I would say sundering, highest attack dice, weaken wishes, and precision. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Anything to add to summary? If nope. not, we can we can jump to the general approach. And Martin, please guide us through the commander list we uh, put together. Yeah, as we uh, made it for you in Dark Wings, Dark Words, we have picked up um, uh, basically one or two commanders for every faction. I won't go uh, uh, step by step. Um, basically, for Lannisters, Gregor is great. For Martels, you can pick Darkstar because of his fast uh, um, speed and shooting ability. For Starks, obviously, it's Greyjohn because in my second to last tournament, I was able to kill two units with Greyjohn's overrun in one activation, and then the game was basically won because it was four points for me. So he's very good for Targaryen, uh, example-wise, it's Drogo. So here you go for your warriors, your frontline warriors, your fighters, and they need to bring the points for you. That's basically um, the general approach here. And then we talked about the commander as objective card. Just pick the best card for your commander. Um, you can use the tier list I said a couple of minutes ago, or just if you if you're playing Darkstar, if you don't care, just pick away the best card for your opponent's commander. Um, yeah, another thing is um, don't forget to activate the activation markers. Uh, they on, um, the cards they can yeah. only be used when the unit is activating. So if you're using swords, no cards for you. You need to activate, and swords is just a free attack, but no activation. And I would say another important thing is you need to try to block or to hinder the enemy commander as much, much as possible, like like with, with palisades, with swarms, with stakes, to make him hard time to come into the game. And on the other hand side, you need to protect your commander because when he's dead, there are no more bonus points for you and you need to bring him uh, into the fight as fast as possible and try to to um, 
attack a good objective, maybe a unit that is not um, very hard to kill, and then it's two points and then you are up. That would be my general approach to this game mode here. Yeah, um, like a question on this activating, right? Activate and choose a card. Again, it's, I, I, I know it's really hard to generalize, but we want to give like the best possible guidance we can give to, to, to uh, beginners or like casual gamers out there. So um, sure, you have to think about it, but is there a, like a general rule on when to do it? Like, can you do it too early is the question. Like, Daniel, is there a way that you say, okay, that this is my first charge. I will pull my sundering off, right? And... Uh, it is it, is there a moment in time in Clash of Kings which 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 would be considered too early? Yeah, round one would obviously be too early <laughs> normally, but like no, for me that's it's, not you know, what I meant. Many <laughs> games are decided in round two and three, really. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe round four um, if they are not like really tactical and all are just you know staring at each other and positioning and cycling around the board so yeah go for it like if you have a charge opportunity and you know your commander will do an attack do it like seriously do it and you could even think mm -hmm. of like let's say we are start of round three or something and uh, you're first turn and you are about to kill something with your commander you might want to um where you otherwise use swords maybe think about activating the unit um to to get the card if you if, if this for some reason um, secures the, you the kill or make it more um, more probable to, to, to do the kill, yeah? That might be a thing. Okay, cool. Um, so I think we're done with Clash of Kings then. Is there any, any, any anything else? Any, any like, um, like, like um, the, the, the last hidden strategy you do when you play Clash of Kings? It's really straightforward in my eyes. Um, Go out there, do your own experience. Um, this is a nice and great game mode. I can really just underline what Martin said in the beginning. Uh, it's it, for me, it's a little bit of a shame that this um, vanished yeah. from the from the document because it's it's straightforward. It's pretty pretty equal. I mean, as free folk, I don't really like this one because like um, yeah, if you have a strong commander on the opponent side, like that can be tough because uh, you will use units in the process for sure. But in general, it's a very very good and balanced game mode, and there are no like yeah secrets and at least in my eyes maybe if you if you know any if you have any other interesting strategies just let us know in the comments mm -hmm. um maybe you do all right yeah exactly oh. daniel daniel said it um use your card when you have the chance to kill or if this card gives you the extra one or two points of damage uh like sundering is the best example here when i can reduce your armor from five to six or something like this and when i can make the kill then it's the perfect uh timing of the card and then there is no too early if this card is rises uh, the chances of killing something it's perfect okay great so next checked one. checked next one all right dance with dragons so uh martin um, would you guide us through the summary of um, Dance with Dragons? Yeah, sure. Dance with Dragons is the other three objective game mode. And in this mode, as in Feast for Crows, you're claiming the token by touching it after a march or a maneuver. You can uh, claim the token by um, pivoting. And there's a downside if you're controlling... Also attacking, if I may interrupt. Like if yeah. You're... Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, also, there's a downside. Uh, if you claim uses this Dragon X, your speed is limited to two inches and it cannot be increased, and you cannot march. So you're very immobile when you're um, grabbing this this Dragon X. So don't grab it with uh, your Lance Cavalry. You want to charge something. That's pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. <clears throat> and. You're losing this egg if you're um, failing a panic test or after an attack if the other unit has more rank uh, more ranks than you. Solo units count as one, one rank here. They don't matter how many hit points they have left. Yeah, and there is no alternative way of scoring, so it's uh, slower than 
Clash of Kings, and in general, I would say it's a slower game mode, which is decided round four, round five, but very rarely earlier. Yeah, it's you know, it's it it's it, it sounds obvious not to pick up these tokens and get 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 your movement reduced, but like I have to say, I see it all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Like just yesterday, I played against Targaryens, full calf, right? So full calf, and on the on the left on the left hand side, there is a, a unit of uh, screamers, naked but screamers, right? So what they and it's obvious what they should do, right? They should go in, they should destroy something, flank something out, and just destroy. And he was like straight up, moving up there, grabbing that thing, and just stayed there. I mean, it scored a lot of points in the end. Um, which, which was not too bad because it's a cheap unit. Um, but I think in the long run, that was a little bit, that little bit made the game because I, I didn't do it because I also played the, you know, the, the Benjamin full calf and I was so mobile all the time and sh like, like shooting and, and trapping everything. <laughs> and like, so, 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 and he was just sitting there, right? So it, you, you really, I, I just, what I want to say is you really need to be sure to claim this egg if yeah. you, Right. If if you you really have to consider is your is your opponent not doing it and just surrounding me then or you know destroying all my alpha units maybe when I when I can't defend with this one unit. But yeah, there's, there's a difference. Uh, like in comparison to Game of Thrones, where you could decide to okay, I score let's say two or three rounds here, and maybe then in the end phase of the game I will become active again. Um, here you cannot decide to just leave the token, you know, um, and that's something to keep to keep in mind and be aware of so if you want if you claim this token you might be you have to be okay with just lo basically losing your unit as an active asset for the rest of the game and if that's fine with you great and you score points it might be a good investment but um yeah you you have to get um get along without it uh, if your opponent doesn't attack it or something yeah yeah, yeah but i think in the general approach we will show you some yeah. units uh who are better egg grabbers than my Tali knights? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so here we are. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, if I might uh, take over this, like, um, in general, it's not on the it's not on the um, on the points we listed here. But the the obvious thing is, you if you want to play the the game mode, which we want to encourage you, you have to claim the eggs, right? And you have to claim the eggs early. And you have to find a way to get them out of the harm's way. And it will not be your two-inch maneuver. <laughs> so so much is clear, yeah? So you need to find, need to find alternative ways of doing this. And um, this means that any form of movement manipulation is very strong, both like offensively against your opponent, but also on your own. Um, if I have equid and box with three folk, like I can reduce you literally to zero movement. You will just stay there and move no inch. You will stay there. And if I want to attack you at some point, I can, because you cannot run away. Um, tactical reposition is great because um, it says the movement speed is limited to two. It doesn't say you cannot move more than two by any means. You can shift three, no problem. You can, if there would be a card that says you can do a 10 inch shift, you could, right? Mm. Um, and this is very important to- Need that card. Yeah, I did that. Um, yeah, I, I heard maybe uh, Night's Watch needs some some help. Oh, could, you heard? Yeah. No. <laughs> so and Just a little bit of help. <laughs> retreats, retreats are very important. Like a retreat, retreating is probably the most effective way to to cover distance in in um, this game mode, right? So be careful if you if you attack your opponent that has uh, an objective and you will not strip it off him this might lose you the game because this unit might be away for a couple of turns. Um, yeah, and obviously don't claim your objective back with your important units. L look at your five points units and so on. Um, look for everything that has tactical reposition, uh, look for armies that have swift reposition and so on and so on, sudden retreat, whatever. And range is very strong in this game mode. Range is very strong, why? Because a range unit claiming a token still is pretty much as effective as it would be anyway. It doesn't lose any threat range. It can shift two for the attack even. Um, so this is very important. And a last thing to mention, you lose the objectives if you fail a panic test, right? And your 
opponent can place it within two inches, the objective. So if you lose it, your whole I will move backwards towards my deployment zone plan um, might get uh, destroyed because, yeah, it will be placed two inches in front of you. So don't activate your unit that you claim the objective with if the crown zone is still open. That's very important and a, a typical very beginning important. mistake. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, I think we can jump to the vis um, to the visuals, right? Um, so let's go to here. All right, so Daniel, you want to show us something here? Yep. Give me a second, please. And there we are. So it's basically just a little. Um, um, a little situation and something you could do, right? Because um, we made a video about terrain and terrain placement and so on and deployment. And what you you can use terrain to your advantage here. Um, as I said, in the general approach, you want to get these eggs. You want to get at least two to get a, uh, to get an advantage and then get the hell out of there. And what you can do is, for example, use a palisade like in the example here. Um, to cover your units. And then you have something like a not so important CAV unit, um, like the Staffel Outriders here, and you have um, something with tactical reposition, and you can do something like this in round one, right? Move your move your spearman 10 inches up. Um, you have your Staffel Outriders claiming the token right away. And now uh, something comes close like this, let's say you don't even need your tech repo right now. You could be charged, but like um, let's say you opened um, round one and now we have round two and this is uh, the first turn, you can simply use tech repo to um, do your like three inch shift and bum, yeah, I'm not very used to this control, but whatever, now you're charge blocked. Now you're completely charge blocked and what your opponent has as an opportunity is, okay, I can charge in the set for charge unit, which is covered by a bog, no rerolls, hey, yeah, very cool. And look at like think about these situations you could also do it like if you have um, a six inch infantry tray standing there could move up even further and then you maybe have a solo tray like a, a direwolf from starks for example perfect for this and um you can yeah sneak in get the token and uh, get the hell out of there and um, then basically you have a fighting withdrawal or fighting retreat that you play and look for this use terrain smart um and i think this could be like an example there are, Obviously, plenty of plenty others. Yeah. Um, that's what we wanted to show here. All right. Anything to add this, uh, to this, Martin? Yeah, I think <clears throat> what's very important here, uh, as we said when we talked about um, tempo plays, uh, from my personal experience, the guy who is who goes second in this, uh, who goes first in the second round, and uh, he can claim the middle objective with the horses is in a very big advantage over the other because it's uh, one goes left, one goes right, and you fight basically all the time for the middle of objective. And if you can secure the middle objective with the horses top of round two, then it's very, very hard because as Daniel said, when I have there, let's say my tally shields are grabbing this objective, then they're going to get charged it's pretty hard to get it off of them because of shield wall, three of armor, very good morale. And then they can retreat. And let's say I roll a five or a six, so I am um, can go back seven or eight inches. And then I can block my tally shields with another unit. And then my opponent basically has <clears throat> no way, it's very hard, but very less ways of getting this token. And it's very, very important in this game mode to control the middle objective um, because this is where the battle will be decided. Mm. So that is a much more easier way of playing this game mode than uh, the example Daniel told us. It's very uh, high skill play Daniel uh, showed us here. But horse round two, a solid unit, pick up the middle objective. Mm. So it's a good advice for beginners. And if you can do this, you will be pretty successful in this mission. And then just run away. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also. I I I also seen you play uh, Martin quite a lot, and I have to say, 
one big thing that a lot of people assume when they pick pick up the game or like start out with the game is they have to destroy something, and they are not allowed to you to lose anything on their side. So basically, the the opposite is quite true, right? I mean, you 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 do not have to kill a lot to win. You can play pretty defensively, run away. You can just stay or. As you just said, grab this token, go back, just block it off with something. Even if you lose it, you will still score, right? So, uh, yeah, so use these tips, guys. Um, so I was, before we recorded this video, I wasn't, I mean, I was aware of how important um, terrain is in uh, Dance with Dragons, but I was not aware of this particular example. So, like, in my future games, I will definitely try to yeah to try this if i can if i can get this going with with the terrain and charge block myself uh like like blocking off my my unit that claimed the token so maybe that works yeah great um i think that rounds it up for both game modes um yeah so this is uh the third uh that that was the third one uh, the third game mode guide and i really want to encourage all of you to put down in the comments below if you want to see some other game modes we did not cover yet, because for us, the, these were some of the most important ones. So we really want to hear your feedback on um, how beneficial is this to you? Do you want to hear more game modes or do should we basically go back to, to, to a little bit more like um, uh, more granular stuff like we did with the terrain or we did with what we have in the works is something about charging, charge blocking, charge ruling, right? All the rules about charging and aligning. Uh, on 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 the trace, especially when you when you consider the terrain also. So this is something w what we have in, in 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 the works right now. But again, I encourage you to to put all your comments down below to 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 guide us to do the best possible content for all of you out there. Um, yeah. So any last words from Daniel or Martin? No, just to add, we are also working on uh, token videos right now. Um, yes. Token um, there are plenty of tokens, condition tokens, pass tokens. <laughs> plenty of tokens. Um, and maybe we can say something about it, which is helpful for beginners. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. Well, if that's it, um, there's one last sentence. And you know what's coming. Until we see again, roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.